Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Roxy Theater. Could there not be a more perfect day to not be outside and instead be inside, enjoying the fruits of the labor of all these emerging directors in Victoria? So thank you all for coming out and spending your time with us. So from over the top, eccentric directors to perspective altering dramas, from doggone funny comedies to poignant lessons in life, from those who are aged seven years to 70 years, and from footage that has come straight out of a cell phone camera to those that have employed special editing and effects, the five minute cell phone challenge has shown what is possible when the main ingredient is creativity paired with a smartphone. So sit back. We are going to start by interviewing the directors of our various films. So please sit back and enjoy the creative work of all these emerging filmmakers. And again, thank you for joining us today. And today we have with us no strangers to the Victoria Independent Film Community, Susan Coe, Trent Peak, And their entry into the Five Minute Cell Phone Challenge was? Doggone it. Doggone it. Now, why don't you tell us how that whole idea started? Who, who had the idea? Well, I, uh, I said to Trent, let's make a movie. He said yes. And then we, I texted you some ideas. Yep. And he's like, ooh, I like the dead dog one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the one, obviously, that you went with. So um, it looked like th I, at the beginning, I thought, oh, nice little drama here, a little heartfelt. And then you got me at the end. So how was that pulling all that together? Like, did you know at the end you were going to turn the viewers around with that story? I think, I can't remember how we got it. We got it to the point where we just left it where I stole the suitcase and left. Mm -hmm. And then we started reworking it, thinking, okay, maybe we'll steal the car. And, uh, and then yeah. that's where we started adding more stuff into it. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was supposed to be sort of low-key yeah. humor, right? And yeah. so uh, the hardest part was getting the dog to lie still, oh. as you can imagine, but she did a really good job. Yeah, she did a good job, yeah. Lock I mean, treats. Yeah. Oh, is that what it's talking oh, yeah. about? Yeah. So what was the around. most fun yeah. out of the whole production? I think I know, but what was it? Uda not closing the door? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love actors. Yeah. They're fantastic uh, talents, uh -huh. but sometimes when you have to give them a cue, yeah. um, it takes them about seven or eight takes for them to realize what they're supposed to be doing so uh -huh. unfortunately we had a situation where we uh you know this particular actor who just kept forgetting things and i would just sit there and go oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah and i would she wasn't supposed to close it and i was standing there so i grab it you know like you can't use that take. <laughs> don't close the door <laughs> what was fun she loved it good yeah, it was fun. yeah and, and it was great because we got people that really don't get a lot of experience. Yeah. Um, you know, we had Charles Isherwood. Yeah. Um, Charles rarely does anything behind the camera. Yeah. So the idea of having him as a cinematographer was just a great experience. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, no, it looked like it was a lot of fun to shoot. Yeah. Well done, well done. So, um, great, it's gonna be fun to see this up on the big screen and see the audience's reaction to everything. So enjoy the rest of the afternoon and enjoy the rest of the films. Thank you. And next we'd like to welcome Age of Bronze creator, we have L.V. Simons and Dorothy Simons. So welcome. Now, is this your first cell phone challenge or have you um, participated in these previously? Well, this is our first one with the cell phone challenge. We have, of course, made a lot of other short films, but when we saw the call for the cell phone challenge, it sounded like a really fun way to spend a couple months this winter. Great. And uh, did you enjoy it as well? I did enjoy it. I did find it kind of tiring at sometimes having to spend like a whole day doing it but I did have fun good good uh, can you tell us how the story came about well it came about directly from the challenge there was the rule that you had to have someone over the age of 60 in a major role uh, in the production and I immediately thought of a really wonderful actor in her 70s that I've worked with. She's also my mother, uh, another Dorothy. So once I knew she was on board, I then cast my other 
my daughter, the other Dorothy, as her younger counterpart, and the script just took its own life from there. Yeah, it was very well done. I enjoyed it immensely. Now, if, if you were explaining to the audience what Age of Bronze is all about, what would you tell them? Well, I'd say it's uh, inspired by Greek plays and how they have a very open dialogue about death. And so I wanted to take that dialogue into a modern context and try to tell a very quiet Greek story about death within a five minute time frame. And I will say there is also a cat in the film. So yes. it's always a fun addition to a film, I find. <laughs> now, is this something you'd like to do again next time a cell phone challenge comes up? I would like to do it again, but next time I think I'd like to be a bit more positive about it because I did get very tired and grumpy at some times. <laughs> so uh, you're going to be able to sit back now and see yourself up on the big screen. That's kind of exciting, eh? Mm -hmm. Good job. Okay, well, thank you very much for participating and for coming up and joining us today. It's wonderful. We look forward to Age of Bronze. Thank you, darling. Thank you. And now I would like to welcome the creators of the film Compromise. We have with us today, on my immediate left, the director, Giuseppe Bucciello. Did I do that well? Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next to Giuseppe is Michael Corrigan, who was the writer, is that correct? I am, yes. So you two must be quite excited about seeing this up on the big screen today. Yes, yes we are. Ah, sure. good. And how would you describe the experience of making the decision to shoot this film. So before you actually got to shooting, what was the collaboration like? Well, just looking for a script. I was planning to, to write my own script, which was a disaster. And eventually I've been looking around and talking to other people. Eventually I said, oh, Michael might be the right person. And so, and said, yeah, I got a couple of short scripts. And they sent to me, I said, that's it, that's a good one. And it wasn't actually really complete, so eventually I said, um, I'm adding a couple more pieces there, and uh, it looks more finished. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, Michael, how did this story originate from your perspective as the writer then? What, what, what was kind of created that story, or what was at the seed of it? I had the germ of an idea, and it was a scene, and then uh, Giuseppe phoned me up in a panic, said, I'm doing 29 takes, I need a movie, I need a script. And so I said, well, have a couple scenes, take a look. And uh, he chose one. And then uh, to make it a movie, I realized it needed a beginning and an end. And so uh, wrote those and uh, was, I, I was glad to help Giuseppe make this movie because he's helped me out so many times yeah. on my productions. Yeah. And, uh, He's a hardworking guy, always helping <laughs> everyone out, and so uh, glad to help him uh, with the script and then record the sound. And then I taught myself Da Vinci Resolve to edit what we're going to watch tonight. Great. And uh, you worked with the mother-daughter team of uh, Catherine and Cassidy Slingsby, yeah. uh, yeah. who I actually just saw yesterday on the way to Mexico, so they're not oh, going please. to be with us today. Yeah. Um, so how was that? Was this the first time you've worked with Catherine and Cassidy? Yes, yes, it was fantastic. I'm yeah. glad that they were, you know, not a beginner art actors. Yeah. So they're not really to do a lot of work. Right. They were doing it by themselves. But it was, you know, we had some a little issues about technical issues, so that helped to that they were so good, so that was really nice. They both did a great job, and I bet um, yeah. they're going to miss being here, but yeah. thank you for all the work that you put into this, and uh, I'm excited also to see the audience's reaction to your film. Yeah. So thanks for participating, and uh, good luck with yeah. the, next, the next one you produce and bring. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And now we would like to welcome Lori Empey, the creator of Joyride. So welcome, and today is the day. Yeah. You get to see I it mean, up on the big screen. Yeah, no, it'll be fun. Now, um, I loved Joyride, uh, yes. and while it's quite comedic, it's also very touching. <laughs> I'm, uh, that was a, a delicate balance to create. Oh, good, thank you. Good thank for you. you. Yeah. Um, so how did you come up with that idea? What was the genesis? Well, I was kind of looking for something uh, that could be outside, obviously, for COVID. I was trying to do that. But I, uh, I like to have something that's a little bit um, 
lighthearted, right? Yeah. You know, and uh, just, you know, so that people look and they see a little bit of themselves or something that they, you know, recognize and have a little chuckle. Yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, it, 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 uh, I think it played well. So, it, yeah, well, it did. We'll right, see. It, and you can tell that there were some um, very skilled filmmakers in it because the production value is very good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And where did you nail that car? <laughs> that is actually my uh, co-producer and the DOP. Her husband is that's her, his his baby. Oh my goodness! So, yes, yeah. It was gorgeous, yeah, yeah. and it looked like your talent had a lot of fun shooting it too. We did. We oh, did. Good. We had really good good uh, good time doing it. What did you find the most difficult thing about putting uh, that film together? Well, the I mean besides the weather, right? Because the original day we were going to film it, it, or I I had to call a couple days ahead of time because. You know, it was due to poor rain, and uh, we weren't allowed to have sweet pea out in the rain. So, uh, you know, it, it's not the actors that were temperamental. Right. It was the car. It was the car. No. Gotcha. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we um, had to reschedule that to following yeah. weekend and, you know, make a call that we weren't quite sure whether it was going to be good weather, but we ended up it being worked. so lucky. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations to Thank you and your you. team. Uh, you. Very well done. And yeah. now you're going to get to see the audience's reaction awesome. and to enjoy it yeah. up on the big screen. Oh, great. So thank you. That Thanks. was Lori, MP, writer, director of Joyride. Thanks, Lori. Mm -hmm. And now we would like to welcome the creators of Adventure Adventures with Lily. We have Andrew Davison to my left and Matthew Skur next to him. So, Adventures with Lily. Um, there was quite a twist to that story. It started out, in my mind, it felt like it was gonna be one story and then it became a different story, which was fun. It was very creative. Where did the idea come from? Well, I always, I watched a lot of Monty Python in my youth. I really enjoyed <laughs> the uh, subtle switch of scenes. And so I decided to do something along the lines of that. Unfortunately, there was a finger amputation partway through our show, so we cut it a bit earlier than I would have liked to, but that's adapting. There and was a real finger amputation? Yeah. Someone Lovely. wanted to show me how to properly chop wood. Gotcha. Yeah. Eesh. Okay. They're okay now. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear. <laughs> and how's Lily? Oh, Lily's great. She's happy as a clown. <laughs> She's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Now, what was the biggest challenge? Aside from the loss of an appendage, what was the biggest challenge in creating this short? Oh, the biggest challenge? I'd say it would be trying to get a lot of footage of Lily while she's kind of hanging out and having a good time without her completely staring at the camera. Cause she, she, usually it's someone she loves behind the camera. She's like, oh, hey, what's up? What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. yeah, wants to interact with you. Oh yeah. Great. Um, so do you, th um, do you think you will probably participate next cell phone challenge? Oh yes, I love these. They're so fun and creative. Oh great. Bring the community together. Good, well you did a great job on it. So thank you for playing. And uh, now you're gonna get to see it all on the big screen. Is Lily here? Oh no, but she will be here. Okay, mm -hmm. well she can maybe watch it online in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So. That'll be fun. Great, yeah. wonderful. Well thank you for participating and thank you for joining us. No problem, okay. thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Have a great day. Okay. And now we would like to welcome to the stage, we have Lauren Kraft, writer-director of But Nothing, and Stephanie Broussard, one of the lead actresses in this film. So welcome, and I'm assuming you're also looking forward to seeing what everybody else has come up with? Yeah. yeah. Now, um, I found that the performances in this were outstanding. I loved them, I, yeah. <laughs> I thought they were really tremendous. Um, and the editing and special effects that were added later too, I just thought, I, I loved the film. It was really, it was a, a favorite. Now, I think the message was pretty clear in it, but what would you say if you were having to describe this for people who were gonna watch it? What would you tell them it was about? Oh, I don't, do you want me to get really deep on it? <laughs> well, the, the, the abuses of wealth and technology. So yeah, that's the underlying theme on it, but, but not really. But not really, because mm -hmm. it looked like you had some fun conveying yeah. that message. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you uh, find the most challenging in trying to pull together this film as a five minute cell phone challenge? 
With all of these things, is it's getting people together. You know, that's one of the hardest parts is because people have schedules and, and all of that kind of thing. So uh, getting the right date yeah. a lot of times is hard. So and that was the hardest part. The rest of it was all just good fun. And how long did it take you to shoot this? Oh, well, we did it in what? Four hours, five hours. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Well done. Now, Stephanie, what kind of background have you got in performance? Um, I've been doing it since I was a kid, mostly community theater, and then recently film, actually because of COVID and there was no more theater. So yeah, Exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is a new venture. and I'm really enjoying film, actually, quite a bit. Yeah. Well, it looks like you and your co-star, what was her name? Kristen. Kristen. It looked like you two had a lot of fun. Yes. I mean, you poured your all into it. I thought the performances were great, but it, yeah, it looked like you were having some fun. Lots of fun. Any recommendations for the next cell phone, for anybody considering going into the cell phone challenge, what's the number one piece of advice you could give them? Well, I, I guess it's kind of a comment. Working with a cell phone is just so liberating because a lot of the other films I've done is, is with, with bigger equipment and exactly. all that stuff. And, and that's good, but working with a cell phone, it really, it's a liberating thing, I, I find. I really enjoy it. Um, and yeah, five minutes, it's, it's something that's doable. Good. You know, you can yeah. write a story, you can, you can film, you can edit it, and it's, it's not going to be something that's necessarily going to fall to the wayside because you, you took on something yep. too big. Good advice. Great advice. All right, Lauren and Stephanie, thank you, and uh, good luck with the film and uh, any other screenings that it may have. It was a joy to watch. I loved it. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. And next up to the stage, representing Brent Lanyon's monster, we have actors Eddie Green and Colin Wilson. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, it was a, a fabulous film. What was the experience like for you to um, portray a blind boy in this film? It was pretty scary to do every single scene with like my eyes shut walking around mm -hmm. it was hard to get used to using the cane as well but eventually i got it and it was really fun in the end you looked quite comfortable doing it so it was very a very believable performance thank you um and what did you find the most challenging about wearing the outfit you had to wear um just really the part that seeing was a little difficult as well right the movement of the head and all that stuff but you get really used to it after a little bit, and it actually becomes quite fun. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, and what about the message of the film? I mean, that must have been when you read the script. I'd assume that would be a good. This would be a good one to get behind. What did you think when you read it? It was kind of sad at the beginning, but I think it was nice at the end to see that, you know, Nathan made a friend, and yeah, he wasn't alone in the end. Exactly. And that. Um, monster or Jacob was also really nice to him when other kids weren't and yeah. yeah and how did you feel about it I felt really good when I read it I could see the message of the short film really well yeah. piggybacking what um, Colin said yeah it's just it was really great to see because it's like a message of don't judge a book by its cover. You know what I mean? Yeah. That old saying, yeah. that old adage. Yeah. Just what's what it's what's underneath, and yeah, was, people just want to connect. That's Absolutely. What I want to do. Well, great job. And if you had any advice to um, uh, kids of your age to participate in a five-minute cell phone challenge, what would you tell them? Don't give up because it's not easy. Okay, it's not it's easy. Not. But do it, right? Yes, do it. Absolutely do it. Good. All right, well, thank you both. And now you're going to see yourselves up on the big screen and be surrounded by an audience and get their reaction. So please sit back and enjoy. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. And now we'd like to welcome to the stage David Moore, okay. writer, director, and actor. Yep. Of Rags to Riches. And that is a story about... Life on the streets, is that how you'd describe it? Social, social commentary on life on the streets. Social comment. okay, you good. really look close, there's a lot of social commentary in there, especially the final scene. Yes, now did you write this for the cell phone challenge or was this an idea you had brewing ahead of time? A friend and I had this idea about five years ago 
bums on the street, ugh. but who's carrying money now? So how can they collect? And so we got this idea and no way to develop it. And then this came along. So we thought, oh, we'll develop it for this. Good. Now, uh, oftentimes filmmakers have issues with locations. How did you, how did you manage your location? Our first location bummed out on us. But in the meanwhile, we went through, it's a five man crew and cast. We had four of us with COVID. I had a heart attack. Uh, the weather was against us. Our location bummed out and we had a week left to do everything. Oh my goodness. This is a film that really wanted to happen. Oh yeah, we had to have it happen. We we're just driving down the street and went, that's a perfect location. And they said, sure. Oh, that's great. Uh, so uh, today is, I'm assuming, the first time you're going to see it up on the big screen. Who have you brought with you? Who's going to be in the audience watching with you? Well, that was the other problem we had was keeping our cast and crew around. Work oh, got yes, in of the course. way. So nobody's coming today except for the lead actress, Beth Anthony. Yes, she's I thought I saw in a, yes, Beth. She's in one of the other films also. Great. So we brought her too. And uh, one word of advice you might have for next year, anybody considering entering the five minute cell phone challenge, what's one piece of advice you'd give them? Cell phones are really good for filming now. So go ahead, do it. Yeah. Take an idea and run with it. That's all we did. And it was easy to get five people together in theory, but we just persevered and finally got it done. Wonderful. Well, congratulations, and I uh, hope you enjoy the, the um, showing of all these films along with yours. Looking and uh, forward to We it. loved it very much, so thanks for participating. Thank you. Thanks, David. And now we'd like to welcome to the stage Brandon Mirbo from Courtney. And Brandon uh, produced one of the only documentary-style films that we've seen. So welcome, Brandon, and thank you for submitting to the Five Minute Cell Phone Challenge. How big is the um, Rob Road Badminton Club to your life? It's a pretty big thing. I mean, badminton has been my sport of choice since high school. I started it in grade 10, and it was kind of my only release from the stresses that come from all the classes you have to do. And, you know, I was in certain uh, like honor student classes and, and, and balancing college as well. So it really was a big helper in my life. It was a big stress reliever. And uh, the message was pretty clear uh, in the documentary around keeping yourself engaged and active and fit yeah. goes a long way to extending quality of life. So these participants, were these all friends of yours previously? Yes, yes they were. Some of them were substitute teachers who I'd known from high school. Others were just people who'd been playing for years and I'd just met and became friends with them over that time. Because I've actually been playing in that club since about 20, 2017. So, yeah. uh, do you play competitively as well? I wish I had. That's the thing. Uh, another message of the film is that badminton's not just a life sport, but it's also an underrated sport, especially mm -hmm. here in Canada. I mean, when it gets to tournaments on a national and international level, we don't even, our teams don't even make it to the quarterfinals usually. We get knocked out immediately and it's just, it's so sad to see that. Uh, but yeah, I, I've only ever gotten to play one tournament in my life and it was at uh, Timberline School and uh, we got the, we got wiped, <laughs> I know what you're gonna completely say. <laughs> wiped. It was, yeah. <laughs> well, um, that's wonderful that you have taken all of that learning that you've had in the sport and turned it into a story to inspire others. So thank you very much, Brandon, and uh, we hope you enjoy watching it up on the big screen today. I will, thank okay, you. Okay, great, thank you. And now we would like to welcome to the stage the world's greatest director, <laughs> Dean Christie and writer-director Russell Mundy. That's Welcome. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So you're gonna, you, boy, you really decked out there. Well, you know. It's... You're wearing the uniform of the world's greatest director. Well, of course. I mean, what else, how else would you come to, <laughs> to a, a, an event like this? <laughs> in, yes, in this grand yeah. hall. I slipped in the side door. There was no red carpet. Oh. So. We'll, we'll see what we can do to make it up to you. Now, Russell, as the writer-director, where did this whole idea come up from? 
Um, literally, it came up when they announced the, uh, the whole festival in the first place. And it just started turning the gears after that. And I just thought, okay, well, let's throw this in. Let's throw this in. Hey, while we're at it, let's do this. Right? And then before you know it, you kind of have a script there. Uh, now, did you audition for all the roles, or did you already know, I think, these people are going to fit into these roles nicely? Um, I did. I talked to at least everybody, but I did have a few preconceptions about who I'd like to do for certain roles. Yeah. Um, but I went through them anyway, um, just to make sure that they would fit the roles that I thought they would fit. Yeah. And it went well. Yes, it was, yeah. it was brilliant. It was, looked like you were having a lot of fun. You were having, I think, too much fun, Dean. <laughs> You're not uh, supposed to say that to an actor. <laughs> now, what was the biggest challenge you had in putting this all together? The biggest challenge I actually had was getting a location for it, uh. right? Um, I guess, well, we're getting out of COVID now, but uh, it's kind of played a bit of a, uh, some havoc on getting things put together sometimes, so. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Best moment for you, Dean, on set? Oh, shoot. I can't give it away because it's the spoiler alert. But That's okay. The They're cat, not going to see it. It wasn't after. me. I wasn't oh. in the scene. It's just the cat is the best part of this. Of the, of the... Yeah, I had to admit that was pretty funny. Yeah, so. Okay, and so now you're here to enjoy it on the big screen and laugh along with the audience and uh, be the celebrity today. Please laugh and, along uh, with the And audience. now, and I've been dying to say this. So now, off my stage. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And now we would like to introduce a very special screening of a film today called Elsa. Elsa was written and directed by Brett Lanyon and uh, co-directed, I believe, with Sue Anthony. Uh, Sue, Sue Coe. Sue Coe, is yeah. that right? Yeah, she was uh, first AD. Yeah. And along with the lead actresses, which were Catherine Slingsby and Cassidy Slingsby, who I think are enjoying, well, at least Mom is enjoying a cocktail on the beach in Mexico at the moment, mm. Uh, we also enjoyed Beth Anthony as the care home worker. Thank you. So, uh, Brent, I know the story well, and what, where did this idea come from? Because it's a pretty intense storyline. Well, that's a fantastic question. Um, sometimes actors seem to get pigeonholed, and I had a message from Catherine Slingsby one day, and she said, Brent, can you write me something on the edge? I keep getting put in these mother roles and as much as I like to do that, I wanna do something that's got a little bite to it. Something that's different, something that's like, you know, twisty or whatever, etc." And I said, okay, and then I sat down and it just like some of the best things come and just flow out of you. And there, the, from start to finish, there's not a ton of changes to it. It just came naturally, it was yeah. wonderful. And what is the running time of that? Uh, the running time is actually seven minutes okay. and one second. That's a lot of drama to pack into seven minutes, so well done. I know. I, I like to call uh, these types of films bathroom films, where you can watch them in the bathroom. And um, no, I do call them that, because they, and they get a lot of plays. Yeah. But um, yeah, we, we had fa fantastic actors. And you actually helped uh, get, get Beth yeah. and suggested <laughs> Beth, which was a fantastic choice. So Good, good. And Beth, your role as the care home worker, yes. how did, what was that experience like for you? Well, it was great. It's actually my background. <laughs> so I did that as a job. Uh, so it made it come naturally to me. And uh, I just love the script. And, uh, you know, just to be a part of any of the films in this festival is awesome. And the other one that you were in was? Rags to Riches. Rags to Riches. And you were the lady on the street yes. interacting with the homeless individual. Yes. Good. Yeah. Now, uh, so Brent, you must be pretty happy with all the submissions you got for this festival this year. Oh, I'm just... I'm just ecstatic, and, and it's always nice to have new directors. I didn't know Roderick was his first uh, work um, as, a, as a director. Um, it's just kind of neat that people get this opportunity, and then they seize it, and then they go, you know what, I, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And that's what excites me. And then they come back. We've got Lori Empey, yeah. who, who is like, I've seen the improvement. Yeah. like dramatically and how she creates and it's just wonderful to see that yeah she has a great submission yeah. this year i want to say also too that elsa was a, uh, was um, filmed by uh, luke connor and he did a fabulous job and uh, really liked working with him yeah luke is uh, quite a well-known videographer here in town and he's very talented so i'm, I'm yeah. glad you had that experience to work yeah. with him all right well i think we're going to wrap this up now and uh, move on to the screening well, so thanks, thanks brent us.
Yes, thank you. Okay, thanks, Beth. Okay. All right. And now it's my honor to welcome to the stage Director Roderick Glanville and Elizabeth Blanco, and you wrote and starred in this, correct? Yes, that's right. Wonderful. Now, this was probably one of the most dramatic submissions that we saw. Um, and if there's a message that you're hoping viewers leave here with, what would you say that message would be? Go, Liz. Um, <laughs> I think it's a movie about hope and perseverance and the goodness and humanity that's left. And that's really what the, the movie is trying to touch upon, is whether or not humanity is worth saving and worth sacrificing for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Now, was this one you had written specifically for this challenge, or was it one you had kind of percolating or even on paper beforehand? Yeah, I had written it as a 10-minute play uh, about six months prior, so I had to shorten it down for the five-minute challenge. So it, and it seemed to translate beautifully. It worked really well. Now, how often do we find you directing, Roderick? I mean, I know you're so well-known in the community for your stage work, theater work. Um, how often do you find yourself directing behind the camera? This is the first time. Really? It was the first time. Uh, Liz is a, a graduate of the Victoria Academy of Dramatic Arts, where I was her instructor. And so she invited me to come into the project. Uh, and uh, I got the chance to work with like, these amazing artists in a collective environment. I mean, it's very much different than directing for stage. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's such a controlled medium that uh, and it celebrates the stillness, whereas theater celebrates action. Exactly. Right? So the action is in the stillness. And that was wonderful to work with these people, and especially with that wonderful script that Liz wrote. Yeah, it yeah. was fabulous. Mm -hmm. Is this something we can expect more of from you, Roderick? I certainly hope so. Oh, good. Absolutely done. Yeah. I, I really it. love the experience. Yeah. Uh, again, working with such great artists in this community. And it's like a, such a vibrant community here. Yeah. So many great creators. Yeah. And so at this point in my career, I'd like to love to do a lot more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. And do you have any more ideas there for other kind of similar uh, films coming up, or sorry, similar challenges coming up? Is there, would you like to do more of this? I think I'd like to do more. Nothing brewing in the works yet, but uh, yeah, I'll have to put pen to paper. I've got a few ideas. And um, okay, so today you get to join the rest of the audience and watch mm -hmm. this on the big screen and see the uh, the labors of you or the. The, the labors of your work. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful film. It really Thanks, touched honey. me. I thought it was yeah. fabulous. So thank you, thank you for participating, yeah. and uh, we'll see you again after the show. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you.